Hey besties, welcome back to Gracie Mae's Tarot. So today we have the 2023 general prediction. I am going to be uploading a separate love prediction, so make sure you check that out because here, I mean, if love comes up, I'll mention it but we're gonna be more focused on the overall energies for 2023. So if you want specific love messages, make sure you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned on and all that good stuff. So we have five groups to choose from today. Um, I thought it would be really, really cute if we did the Sailor Scouts. So for pile one, we have Sailor Moon and let me make sure, yeah, you guys can see that. Okay, we have Sailor Moon. I'm gonna make sure I don't knock them over. Pile two, we have Sailor Mercury. For pile three, we have Sailor Jupiter. Cute. And then for pile four, we have Sailor Mars. And then for pile five here, we have Sailor Venus. So take a moment, pause the video if you need to, and meditate on the groups. Timestamps are going to be listed below in the description box, just like always. Um, I'm also doing pretty much all tarot. Um, we're going to end your reading with the Everyday Witch Oracle. But I mean, as a reader, like I just love to work with the tarot. And I thought it would be really cool to do four different tarot decks. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but anyway, timestamps are in the description box. Let's get into it. Hey Pile One, if you chose Sailor Moon, you are in the right place. I'm so happy that's staying, I can't even tell you. <laughs> so let's find out what's going on for you in 2023. So with the Crystal Unicorn Tarot, we're going to be looking at January, February, March. So the first three months of the year, January, February, March. <laughs> What's going on for my Pile Ones, please, Spirit? And a big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. I love to shuffle on camera. I know it does make the reading a little bit longer, but I swear the messages are just better. <laughs> okay, Pile One. Sailor Moon, January, February, March. What will your life be like, 2023? And let's do all uprights for this reading too. We're not taking reversals. Let's do it like that. Ooh, I love how this came out. <laughs> this is perfect. So we have the hanged unicorn here. We have the moon. And we have the ten of cups to start out. And then your bottom of the deck energy is death. So I love this for you for January, February, March. So at the beginning of 2023, you're going to feel like not a lot is going on at the very start of the year. I feel like you have a lot of expectations, but there's definitely this undercurrent of uneasiness in your energy with the moon here. There's a lot of things that are up in the air to the point to where you feel up in the air. You feel tied up because... There's a lot that you know is going to change or many things that you know long term are not sustainable, things that will eventually have to change. So you may have something in your life, for example, like a relationship that you know is pretty much run its course. Um, or maybe there is a job that you're in where you know you're not going to stay long term or maybe you'll be graduating at the end of the springtime, that kind of thing. So there's things that are up in the air, but there's a lot of uncertainty about what new things are coming in and what's going to end and how it's going to end and stuff like that. And you know, internally, you yourself are going through a lot of changes. And so it's kind of like this energy of growing pains in January, February, March, because you have changed so much. You have outgrown certain circumstances, people, environments in your life, and you know they're on the way out the door. And it's kind of just this uncertainty of like how it's all going to come to pass. And I feel like the Ten of Cups is here to reassure you that January, February, March may be a little bit rough. You may feel tied to certain things that you know you've outgrown. You may feel trapped or stuck in certain situations. You may be afraid of the unknown, but Spirit is saying the unknown 
in and of itself represents potential. And so the potential here is the Ten of Cups. So I feel like the beginning of 2023, if we're talking about the very first quarter, you know, those first three months, what's happening? It's right there. Like it is everything is sort of being lined up to bring you to this Ten of Cups energy. And so what does sort of happiness fulfillment look like to you? Like if you were to imagine your life and that life was reflective of a full heart, they're telling me. Like what what would make your heart feel full? That is what is being sort of like things are being cleared away January, February, March to bring you that energy of fullness. So, you know, we're just making space. And so you'll find in those first three months, things are falling away from your life. Things are up in the air. Things are changing kind of rapidly and then stopping, changing rapidly, stopping. Like there's this kind of tension between you and your environment or the people that you're spending time around because you've outgrown it, like you've changed. And so Spirit is saying, because you've gone through this up-leveling, your connections to other people, where you work, the environments that you're in, maybe even where you live, it has to change to match this inner growth that you have experienced. And so Spirit is really working in your favor. I just feel like the process is going to be, it's going to require so much trust and faith. And that's hard. Like even when you're a really spiritual person, that's hard. And so Spirit is saying like, trust us because this is going to be the outcome by the time you reach the end of March, this is going to be the outcome, but it's going to take a minute for us to get this sorted. And so if we're the takeaway, I think from this section of your reading, trust, patience, faith, trust, patience, faith, you know, January and February, I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be difficult. And a lot of it's going to be mental and emotional, like trying to deal with those growing pains, you know, because it's hard to be in environments that you have outgrown. You know, it's hard to look around and feel like you're the only mature person in the room kind of feeling, you know, Um, for a lot of you, like you're in like a toxic work environment, or, you know, maybe you even left your job or you moved out of a bad place and or you left a bad relationship and there's just nothing and you're like okay spirit i took that leap of faith i left whatever behind what's new what's coming and spirit is saying give us just a minute we're we're working it out so take it as it resonates but that's what we're looking at for your first three months okay let's move on (laughs) So April, May, and June, what can we expect? Sorry if you guys can hear the sirens outside. I live near a fire station and I swear it happens pretty much at least once a reading. So April, May, June. Please spirit, what can pile one expect? April, May, June. And I'm going to put these to the side just so I don't have a huge mess at the end. So April, May, June. And it's kind of funny that you chose Sailor Moon now that I'm thinking about it because at least in the 90s TV show when, you know, Luna finds Usagi and, you know, she becomes Sailor Moon and all of that, it's a, you know, it's growing pains, you know, she has to grow into it. She's definitely not a a natural hero, (laughs) you know? Um, She definitely has like the most, I think, character development throughout the series. And so, and not to like put you down or anything, but it's just to recognize how much you have grown in 2022 going into 23. And that's why you know, like your external circumstances kind of need to catch up to this inner growth that you have accomplished. So it's something to be proud of, pile one. Okay, 
Also, yay for like main character energy, right? <laughs> Sailor Moon. Okay. So we've got the Three of Pentacles, April, May, June, Pile One, Peace Spirit. The Hermits, April, May, June, Pile One. Okay, I'm really, really liking this. Let's get, I wanna take the bottom of the deck because it's the 10 of cups. <laughs> so yeah, all right. So spirit promised you by March, we'll, we'll be at the 10 of cups. And now I'm seeing 10 of cups. So definitely I feel like so far, if we had to pick out a theme, you know, for your 2023, it's the 10 of cups. So I would definitely check out the love reading 100% um, whenever that gets posted. It may end up being posted before this reading, so maybe you've already seen it. But we've got the three of pentacles, the hermit, the queen of cups, and the 10 of cups. So I feel like 2023 is really a year about you finding your emotional fulfillment. Like, you feeling like your heart is full, feeling like you're in love with your life again. And remember how we were talking about you doing so much work in 2022 that you have outgrown, you know, this life that you've led. And it's kind of like this snake shedding its skin, you know, like you're going through this rebirth process. And the hermit talks about a deep spiritual journey. And this tells me that not only did you do a lot of work on yourself and your connection to spirit in 2022, but the fact that you continue to do that work and you continue to live by the lessons that you have learned, like you're not backsliding into old bad habits. You're not um, engaging in, you know, connections with people that you know bring out the worst in you or people who are you know, not the best influence, you know, people who gossip a lot or, you know, people who tend to give like a lot of backhanded compliments or make snide remarks to put other people down to make themselves feel better, stuff like that. You know, like you are just really maintaining the growth from 2022 and you're carrying those lessons that you have learned over into 23 and spirit is recognizing that. And so to have the hermit next to the queen of cups is incredibly powerful because if you spent 2022 mostly alone or isolating yourself or just being very protective or careful about your energy and who you let into your life and who you associated with and things like that, if you did a lot of social pruning, you know, in your connections in 2022, in 23, you're opening your heart back up, you know, you're making new connections, you're meeting new people, you are um, a lot more emotionally vulnerable, and you are feeling very fulfilled in your social connections, whether they be with family, friends, or romantic partnerships, you're feeling great. But the best part of that is, with the Hermit card next to the Queen of Cups, you are not sacrificing the growth that you've, you know, accomplished here. You're still in your own energy. You are still, you know, filling up your own cup. You are still in a place where you love and accept yourself. You know, you really have that unconditional love for yourself. And because of that, your connections with other people are improving. So it's not like you are in hermit mode, isolating yourself because you're afraid that when you do open back up to people, they're going to ruin all the positive progress you've made. There's none of that. Like you are safe to love. You are safe to open up. You are safe to offer your friendship, your companionship um, to other people. You are safe to open up to all kinds of connections, you know, whether they be business partnerships or friendships, family, romantic, it's just safe for you to be open. And I feel like and that feels so liberating for you. You know, I feel like you see like the, <laughs> the, 
the growth that is happening internally here. I also feel like if there's a creative project that you started in 2022, you are finding great success in that in 23, especially in that second quarter. Because with the Three of Pentacles here and the Queen of Cups and the Ten of Cups, I feel like people are really connecting and resonating with whatever creative project that you're into. Um, I feel like people are really connecting with it. It's really speaking to people's hearts and souls. And it is in alignment with your purpose, your soul's purpose. So if you started something in 22 and maybe you were afraid to share it, or if you had put it out there and maybe not a lot of people have seen it or recognized it yet, expect massive growth. And expect people to give you a lot of positive feedback and I feel like that support and feeling understood and seen by so many people is going to really bolster not only your self-confidence, but also your connection to just the collective energy in general. And you're going to feel a lot better just about humanity, which is going to be awesome. I personally resonate with that, to be honest, because, I mean, starting this channel, I mean, I definitely... I mean, I had positive expectations, but how sweet and kind people have been in the comments has been surprising. Like, I expected good feedback, but not, I mean, people have just posted like the most heartfelt, sweet comments, and it really has like made a difference. And I feel like you're going to experience that in, you know, in some manner in 23, where if you've, and even if you start a new job and you're really nervous about it, I could see you absolutely, um, oh, she fell. <laughs> I could see you absolutely, um, connecting with your new coworkers and feeling happy and content in your new, um, working environments. Yeah. And I also feel like you're going to have enough you're going to have enough financial security to where it's not at the forethought. It's not taking over all of your thoughts anymore. Like if you were really stressed about your financial situation in 22, you know, by April, May, June, I feel like you ha you're able to clear your mind and just focus on the work itself. Focus on enjoying the process of your of your actual work, whatever it is, and not be so focused on whether it's financially successful or not because you're just in a better financial position, like you're making more money. So this could be a new job where you just have a higher salary or better benefits. Um, this could be, you know, your creative project taking off, your side hustle taking off, and you're able to financially support yourself in that way. Um, I also feel like, you know, if you've been stressed about work because you work with people that just make it a toxic environment or you have a boss who micromanages you, I also see that getting better because it just feels like things are more peaceful for you in relation to your career as well. And if you're like a stay-at-home parent, um, so like your work is within the home or you work from home, that could be that communication between you and your partner are getting better and they're respecting more of, you know, the value you add to the household, you know, by all the work that you do within the home as well. And that's a very specific message, but... You know, I want to address that because I understand that not everyone works outside the home. But yeah, Ten of Cups, like that, this is such a beautiful, beautiful card. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with tarot, this is one of the happiest cards in the whole deck. And it's also a card of completion with the Ten energy. So this is like, like we said before, this is true emotional fulfillment. And to have it next to the Queen of Cups... This is also you receiving a lot of gifts and a lot of blessings. So this could be blessings from the universe, but it could also be that you just notice that people are more willing to help you. You know, people are just thinking of you more, being more considerate towards you. Also, if you're wanting to get pregnant, this could also be a great time. Um, this could also be a great time to start a new project as well. If you've been thinking about it, but you haven't started it yet, these two cards are giving you a green light to do so. Okay, let's move on. 
So what was that? <laughs> April, May, June. So now we're doing July, August, and September. July, August, and September. Let's see, July, August, and September, pile one. What can we expect? I also just saw um, my favorite stray cat outside, the orange one I've been trying to keep alive. It's looking a lot floofier, which is a good sign. Its fur doesn't look so matted anymore, which is great. Every time I see the cat walk by, I just, it's a good omen. <laughs> good omen for your reading. All right, July, August, September, pile one. What do we need to know? Two of pentacles. July, August, September, July, August, September. We've got temperance here. So a lot about balance already. We've got the magician. Let's see. I want to take, let's shuffle one more card. There we go. Ah, this, <laughs> the six of pentacles. So a lot about balance. Um, yeah. I was going to laugh if you got the ten of cups as your bottom of the deck again. <laughs> okay. So I feel like the success that you're experiencing that we were talking about with these cards here in the previous quarter, I feel like you have a lot. It's like you have more responsibilities. You have more things to balance because you're doing so well. You know, so when you experience, for example, career growth, and let's say you also start a new romantic partnership or you also start planning to start to have a family. You know, like your love life has a lot going on. Your career has a lot going on. It's all positive, but it is requiring you to manage your time more effectively, right? You're not just focusing on yourself. Now you have other people to think about, whether it's your customers, your viewers, your supporters, um, your family, your romantic partner, whatever, you have more people to answer to. You have more responsibilities. And so I feel like part of that is spirit is saying, definitely don't lose your confidence you wouldn't have so many positive things cooking if A, we didn't think you could handle it, B, if we didn't think that you deserved it, and C, if you hadn't manifested it to begin with. So spirit is kind of like suggesting to you, A, recognize your own strength here, but also consider how you can be smart about handling all of this positive growth because if you can manifest so much abundance in your life, can't you also manifest a way to get more help to manage it all or for guidance from spirit and how to restructure your routine in some way? You know, so this could be like maybe you start a new business and it takes off faster than you expected and you don't know quite how to handle it all then why not manifest a mentor or manifest an office space where you can go and run your business more smoothly outside of the home, a place that's affordable and close to your house or manifest the right team to come on and help you or to manifest the right assistant. You know, you see what I'm saying here? Like I'm just throwing out examples, but I think spirit is saying like you can manifest even more abundance to help you manage the abundance that you have already called in. So, you know, spirit is saying like there's no end to how we can support you in your dreams, which is a beautiful message. Um, and I feel like spirit is also just encouraging you to remember to take care of yourself in all of this. Um, because your health is always the most important thing, right? Like you can't work if you're dead, you know? So definitely remember uh, to, to keep in mind that your health is very important. Also with the Six of Pentacles here, uh, for those of you who 
are wanting to call in a new romantic partner or if you're already in a committed relationship, I feel like there's going to be a balance here. Like as you get more successful, so does your partner. Or with you reaching this new level of success, you find yourself attracting people who match that level of success that you've just achieved. Um, and, it, and it doesn't even have to necessarily be romantic now that I'm talking about this. This could be friends in higher places, I'm hearing. Friends in higher places. Friends who can motivate you or support you to do even better than what you're already doing. People that inspire you, not people who drag you down. And also people who have enough of their own thing going that they're not jealous of you. And so that they can be fully supportive of you and genuinely want the best for you and genuinely clap at your success and cheer you on when you're doing well and support you when you're feeling down without being secretly happy about it, you know? So it really feels like this energy of the right people, friends in higher places. I'm hearing that over and over again, friends in higher places, okay? And that's not, not just like higher places, like friends who make more money, but friends who are vibrationally operating at a higher level here. Yeah, authentic people, I'm hearing authenticity. And with temperance energy, I mean, luck is on your side. Luck is on your side. It's like you're being pulled to the heavens here, like you're being pulled to ascend. And you're juggling a lot, you know? It's gonna be a very busy time of the year, but it's a very fruitful season. I'm hearing a fruitful season for you. Okay, let's move on. So last quarter here, we've got our last tarot deck. October, November, December, pile one, what can they expect? Pile one, what can they expect? Ooh, the king of pentacles. I like to see him. <laughs> As shut up, you guys got the ten of cups again. Aww. Pile one, I mean, you're kind of winning at life in 2023. <laughs> okay, let's see. Pile one, 2023. The queen of pentacles. Yes. Okay. Ace of cups, and I'm also seeing the ten of pentacles. So you got an extra card here. Beautiful. And it was interesting, like when I was looking at your bottom of the deck, it was flipped over like this. So when I flipped it over, it's the Five of Cups. So if 2022 was a year of grief, loss, disappointment, things just kind of sucking in general, <laughs> that's not 2023. Um, so this is incredibly positive. So we were talking about, oh my gosh, there's a dog outside barking nonstop. Okay, I think it stopped. I, I've had a cat now for so long. I used to have a dog, but I mean, I, I don't know. You just get so used to having a quiet pet that, <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long time since I had to deal with barking. <laughs> All right, so with the 10 of cups, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, we were saying in the beginning of your reading that we were building towards this energy of the Ten of Cups and Spirit was saying like, be patient with us, right? And we saw the Ten of Cups come out in a different, I forget which, but a different quarter as well. So I feel like it's an energy that's definitely gonna carry you through the whole year. It's definitely going to be a recurring theme, which is very positive. So I'm gonna say all the messages that are coming through because there's several. And if it doesn't resonate, leave it, okay? Because there's many of you watching. With the King of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, and the Ten of Cups, for those of you who are wanting a new romantic partner or wanting a higher level of commitment or you and your current partner have a lot of financial goals that you're wanting to achieve, Yes, yes, yes. Like, yes to all of that. That is coming in because the king and queen are a perfect match for each other. 
So given the fact that we also have the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups, the Ace of Cups, everything at the end of your life, at the end of your life, oh my gosh, at the end of your year, <laughs> maybe this energy will continue through the end of your life. <laughs> we wish. Um, the end of the year, 2023, your money's going to be right. Your love life is going to be right. Your self-love ace of cups is on point. You have finally found a balance between taking care of yourself, prioritizing yourself, prioritizing your love life, and prioritizing your career and your family. Everything is on point. And let me tell you, October, November, December, enjoy that energy. Enjoy it. Count your blessings. Be so grateful. Say thank you, thank you, thank you to spirit. And remember, when we talked about the very beginning of your reading, you felt stuck. You were having growing pains. There was a lot of uncertainty. And what did I tell you? Patience, trust, and faith. We're going to get you through that. This is the reward. And it's not that you're not seeing rewards throughout the year because you are. But if we're talking about everything just feeling about as perfect as it can get, because life is never perfect, right? But, you know, just feeling quite content and quite peaceful and quite happy and feeling like every area of your life is going pretty darn good. That's this quarter. That's the end of the year for you. And we were talking about also your partner finding more success at the same time as you. Are you attracting a partner who was more aligned with your level of success? Bam, king and queen of pentacles, that's it. And you don't have to be an earth sign. You know, you don't have to be an earth sign. I feel like the message here is just that you're doing really well financially. And you each have your own lane, like you each have something to bring to the table. And so that divine masculine and that divine feminine are working together to create a happy home. I definitely feel like you could be living with this person if you're not already. Or you're making plans to build a future. And for some of you, you really are planning to start a family as well. Look at all these cats. So cute. <laughs> But yes, I, and I feel like also with all the pictures here on the walls, like this is the energy of like a power couple of creating a legacy of creating generational wealth. And also you could find yourself, I could also see if you, um, maybe planning a vacation too. I don't think that you're taking a vacation during this time, but I, I feel like you may be planning for it. I feel like you may be sitting down with your partner and saying, like, we've had so much success, we've worked so hard this year, or we've gotten to a really good place. Let's take that vacation, let's take that trip. But you're just planning for it. I don't see you taking it at the end of the year, but you, you would be planning for it. I feel like a lot of your time in 2023 is spent figuring out how to handle and manage all of the good things that have come into your life because I feel like things have gotten exponentially better and way better than what you would have initially thought possible. And so you're just trying to adjust to everything and figure out your kind of kind of like your own place within your this new life that you've created. And especially for those of you who are single going into 2023, I don't see you being single at the end of the year. And so I feel like you would also be finding your place um, within that romantic connection as well. And even uh, for some of you adjusting, if this new partner has pets and you have pets, like figuring out that dynamic um, with like introducing each other um, or introducing your pets to one another is what I meant to say. And you see how, like, the Alice doll is here behind, behind her? Like, I, I feel like your, your old version of yourself is on a shelf, you know? Like, 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 you've made peace with your past self, and you've said, thank you for getting me this far. You had the death card in the very beginning, right? Like, this new version of yourself 
feels more like the best version of yourself. And so you're not mad at your old self. You know, you don't have any bitterness towards, you know, or any regrets or things like that. You, you've really made peace with the past and that's created this sense of freedom. And that deepening of your self-love as well, like loving yourself unconditionally, accepting that the past version of yourself did the best that they could and hey, they got you this far and where you're at now is incredible. So saying thank you to your past for everything it's taught you. There's a real sense of freedom here as well. Like there's so much stability and security, but your heart feels free and your heart feels full. It's a beautiful energy, beautiful. Okay, so I didn't even open up the box. <laughs> Let's get uh, one Oracle card message and then that will end your reading pile one. Okay. Pile one, energy for 2023. Pile one's energy for, whoa, 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 whoa. I've dropped everything. Okay, this was the card that flipped over though. <laughs> Meditation for peace and serenity. I feel like that's exactly where you're ending the year, where you just feel content. Like you just feel like everything is going the way that you want it to. And again, it's not about things actually being perfect, but things being perfect for you. You know, like you feeling like this is the best my life has ever been and feeling quite satisfied and happy with the positive progress that you've made. And it feels all encompassing. It feels like every aspect of your life has had some kind of glow up, like your relationship, your relationship with others, your relationship to yourself, your relationship to your career goals, your creative projects, like everything romantically, like things just feel really awesome. Okay, so pile one, this was your 2023 prediction. Um, like I said before, make sure you check out the love reading as well for more specific love messages. But from what I can see here, it looks very positive. Um, please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Hit the notification bell so you always know when I upload. The easiest way to support the channel is to watch the ads. Um, you can also do super thanks now, which is like a virtual tip jar. Um, that's also appreciated, not expected, but appreciated. And a huge thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel thus far. It really means the world to me and it's super exciting uh, to see our community grow. And yeah, I hope that you all have a great uh, December and I will see you all in my next one. Hi, Pile 2. If you chose Sailor Mercury, you're in the right place. Let's see if I can stand her there. Yes. Okay. It worked with Pile 1, but you never know. <laughs> okay, so we're breaking this up. We're going to start with January, February, March. So Pile 2, January, February, March. What can you expect in 2023? And a big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. And we will also say no reversals, please, Spirit. You can always ask, you know, your guides. If you're new to tarot especially, um, you know, sometimes I'm just not in the mood <laughs> with to do with the reversals. So you can just ask Spirit. Um, or, like, if you pull certain cards and you're kind of confused by them and then you clarify and you're still confused, say, Spirit, like, can you show me this story in a different way? And then just reshuffle because you can tell the same story with different cards, right? Okay, it's just a little beginner's tip for some of you if you need it. All right, January, February, March, pile two. What can they expect? January, February, March. Make sure you guys check out um, the love reading too for specific love messages. I don't know when it's gonna be uploaded, so make sure you're subscribed, notification bell and all that good stuff. 
So we've got the Seven of Wands and the Ace of Swords to start us out. Pile one, January, February, March. My stomach just growled, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, the Empress, okay. Get it, pile two, I love the Empress. <laughs> That's a good energy. Okay, I love this for you. I We got one extra card um, than I was expecting, but I'm not mad at it. So we got the Seven of Wands, the Ace of Swords, the Empress, the High Priestess, and the Six of Pentacles here. So, in the first three months of the year, Spirit is giving you this moment where you're going to kind of stand back and say, what I've been doing isn't working. And so definitely apply this message how it resonates because for some of you, it could be talking about love. For some of you, it's, for some of you, it's talking about work or a connection with a friend or a family member, whatever. But there's something with the Seven of Wands. It's not working. Like you've tried and you've tried and you tried and you feel like you're hitting a wall. You know, there's too many barriers, too many obstacles. If it's a person, they're just not meeting you halfway, like whatsoever. And you just feel like it's it's just not, it's just not coming into fruition the way that you want it to. You know, you're just not seeing that progress. And you feel like you're putting in all of this work and you're just not seeing any effort. And so spirit is going to come through with this Ace of Swords and kind of challenge you a little bit to say, okay, like if it's not working by me putting in all of this effort and all of these, you know, these actions, right? This very like masculine energy. Why don't I just stop? <laughs> I just stop and sit back like the Empress does and connect to my intuition with the high priestess and co-create with spirit. Why don't I just stop? Because I'm trying to have control. I'm trying to control something that I cannot control. And the more that I try, the more that I'm wasting my own energy. And so with the six of pentacles here, spirit is saying, let's balance the scales here. Let us help you. And so spirit may do something that's like divine intervention that just works it out for you. Spirit may bring in a person to help you. You may find unexpected money comes to you to help you. Unexpected resources, someone offering you assistance, a mentor, a certain opportunity opening up to you that you weren't expecting, but some kind of help is coming in that you weren't expecting, but it's not going to come in until you loosen your grip and you sit, you, you stand back and you let spirit intervene for you. And so it's not quite like you're not manifesting. This is more of just stopping, stepping back, setting an intention like, you know, you can say a prayer like, Spirit, can you please help me with this? But I feel like Spirit is already aware of your intention, to be honest, because of this Seven of Wands card. I feel like it's really just about you getting quiet and stepping back. And so you may get an intuitive download that leads you in the right direction to this opportunity, this help, this assistance. But something is improving. Something is improving in those first three months that you were seeing no progress on, no progress. I'll give you guys a personal example of this. When I moved, I moved from North Carolina to South Carolina to Georgia. And <laughs> when I, somewhere between there, South Carolina and Georgia, I paid off my car. And when you pay off your car, they're supposed to release the title to you which they did. South Carolina sent me the title, so I had my title. The problem was, was that North Carolina, where I originally bought the car, released a title after South Carolina released their title to me, making my South Carolina title null and void. 
Even though my car wasn't registered in North Carolina, hadn't lived in North Carolina in a while, thanks North Carolina, you really screwed me over. I don't know where they sent that title to, but they never sent it to me. And they never sent it to my bank either. And I have a great bank, I have an awesome bank. And so my bank wasn't able to help me because they didn't have the title. South Carolina wasn't able to help me. <laughs> and the state of Georgia was like, well, we can register your car, thank God, but we can't give you a title because you have to have the North Carolina one to get a Georgia title. You, you, the South Carolina one is basically useless. Like they took it from me. Like they tore it up. They were like, you can't have this. And I'm like, what? Awesome. So I was dealing with three different state governments. It was a nightmare. I couldn't get anyone on the phone. Um, and then when I finally did speak to someone in Georgia, she basically was like, yeah, you're screwed because all the state laws are different and everyone has their own process. And they're just, they're not going to, they're not going to do things the way that we want it because they're following their own rules. And so I didn't know what to do. I was like, what, what do I do? Like, no one can help me. I can't, I can't talk to anyone. My bank can't help me because they don't have it. I don't know where they mailed this North Carolina title to. What do I do? And so for the first time in my life, probably, because I'm like very type A, I just let it go. I was like, well, at least my car is registered. I guess I just don't have my car title. I don't know what to do. So I just let it go. And I don't know what happened, but I left it up to God. And so <laughs> it was like maybe six months later, I just randomly got a Georgia car title in the mail. They just mailed it to me. Just randomly. And I was like, okay, I guess God worked that one out for me because I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> like, had no clue what to do. So something like that in your life could be happening. Something that's been a huge problem, a stressor for you, and you feel like you're just hitting a wall and no one's helping you out and no one's meeting you halfway. Bam. Spirit just intervenes for you and fixes it. So I hope that, <laughs> I know that was like a very specific example, but definitely apply it how it resonates. Because this could be talking about a relationship with someone, um, could be talking about something related to school, whatever, a certain application, something you're applying for. So yes. Okay. Now we are looking at April, May, June. April, May, June for my pile twos. April, May, June. Man, this blanket's dirty. Gracie's been laying up here. <laughs> I can tell she's had the fuzzy butt. Okay. For those of you who don't know, Gracie's my cat. <laughs> okay. April, May, June. April, May, June, my pile twos. April, May, June, my pile twos. April, May, June. Let's see. Ooh, the Six of Swords. I love this. The Six of Swords, the Queen of Wands. I'm partial to the Queen of Wands. I love her. And actually, that card's a little bit graphic. I don't want to get in trouble. Let's do... Let's just cover cover her on up okay pile two april may june for my pile twos the four of swords how cool is this deck by the way and it was so cheap. I got it, I think I got it at Books A Million or Amazon, I can't remember. It was only like 10 bucks. Or like, you know, like 9.50 or something. Ooh, and the Knight of Swords, okay. I love this for you, I really do, okay. You also have the High Priestess as your bottom of the deck. So in the year 2023, definitely trust your intuition. You know, um, if you need, you can check out my little intuition check videos. They're only one question. You can practice. But I feel like your intuition is on point. <laughs> and your connection to spirit is on point uh, in the month, in the month, in the year 2023. Um, 
because we've got the Six of Swords, we've got the Queen of Wands, the Four of Swords, and the Knight of Swords. I feel like if you're someone who tends to be in your head a lot, you overthink, you second guess, you worry, you have difficulty sleeping, that's typically your jam. I mean, you chose Sailor Mercury, right? Like, if you're just someone who uses their mind more than their heart or their intuition or your gut, um, that's just, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel like you're learning how to use all of your resources next year um you know like i mean think about it sailor mercury is so smart but if you combine that with listening to your heart and listening to your intuition and taking practical action taking inspired action wouldn't you be an, an unstoppable force and that's what it feels like it feels like you can you can walk on these swords you know like you can go after what you want. You can feel safe enough to take a break when you need to take a break. You can be in your creative energy. You can be sociable and you can achieve whatever. With the Six of Swords here and this Knight of Swords, is it's kind of reminding me of like the energy that we just talked about. There is a lot of divine support next year for you a lot of divine support, you are getting so many psychic downloads. Even if you don't, you're like, Bethany, I'm not psychic. I'm not psychic. You are getting epiphany moments, aha moments, light bulb above your head. You're in a cartoon moments. Like that's what you're getting. Your mind, I think, is getting quiet enough finally for this divine guidance to come in. I would really, really caution you next year to be mindful of taking advice from other people because spirit really, really wants you to listen to them, yes, but also listen to your heart because they have some really, the queen of wands is all about her heart. Like, I, I know she's not the queen of cups, but the queen of wands, that fire energy that creativity, Leo rules the heart. I mean, listen to your heart here. Listen to your passion. Go with your gut on things. Because I think if you listen to the advice of the people around you, you're going to live a smaller life. And spirit kind of wants to expand things for you next year. And so I feel like spirit is rushing in and giving you so much advice. And it's kind of like, uh, don't cut off your hand to spite your face. It's reminding me of the Taylor Swift song, The Archer. She said, I cut off my nose just to spite my face. I think now every time I look in the mirror, like, like she doesn't like what she sees. You may feel a little bit on your own, in the sense that other people may not understand your choices next year, but every decision that you're making is the best possible decision for you and is gonna be in alignment with what spirit is wanting you to do because spirit wants you to dream bigger here and not shoot yourself in the foot because you're thinking too small. I feel like there's so much untapped potential I feel like spirit sees you because Sailor Mercury, she's quite quiet and understated, but she is the strategist. She adds so much value to the team. And I feel like spirit is saying like what, what we're wanting you to achieve next year is going to require some planning and you making the right moves, you making the right choices. And it's very important for you to go with your gut, listen to your heart, listen to us, and not, not your circle. Whoever is in your circle, not your circle, or even societal expectations. Because you're, you're meant to do something big. And you're meant to get away from feeling like you have to work so hard just to get half of what other people have. Spirit really wants you out of that narrative. 
And again, it doesn't have to just be career. It can be romantic too, like feeling like you have to look perfect and you have to be the funniest or the smartest to compensate because you don't feel that attractive. You know what I mean? Like, no. Or like you have to spend a ton of money because, you know, that's that's the only way people will want to date you. No. And so spirit doesn't want you to feel like you're in this narrative that you have to work so hard, again, just to get half of what other people have. Spirit is saying, like, you deserve the whole cake. Like, you deserve the whole cake and you deserve to eat it too. Yeah, like, th there's just this energy of, like, wanting you to get away from dreaming small and wanting you to get away from feeling guilty for taking a break or resting because you think you always have to put in so much work again to get half the success that other people have. So there is a lot going on internally during these months. And I feel like you're going to be faced with several paths, several decisions that you're going to have to make during this time. But spirit doesn't want you to worry about that. Spirit is saying, just get quiet. And we'll help you. We'll tell you where to go. It's going to be okay. We're going to hold your hand through this process. You're not alone. You're never alone. And I think getting out into nature during this time, I mean, just go sit in your backyard. You know, go take a walk around your neighborhood. Any access to green space that you have or just meditating next to a plant in your room. Like whatever you got, connecting with nature would be helpful. Okay, let's move on. So let's see here. We just did April, May, June. So July, August, September. July, August, September. Pile two. July, August, September. What can they expect? It's so funny, like, how different, <laughs> different groups can be. <laughs> okay. July, August, September, pile two here. We've got the Four of Pentacles to start us off. We've got the Lovers. We've got the Page of Wands. And we've got the Ten of Wands. Okay. Bottom of the deck, though, we have the Star card. I feel like there is a little bit of an energy here of resistance on your part because I think what Spirit is asking you next year is so hard for you. Like, I feel like you're someone who just puts in a lot of effort, you put your whole heart into things, and you kind of just can't help yourself. And, you know, kind of, again, like Sailor Mercury, like she studies all the time. Spirit is saying, stop treating yourself like a page, because you're really a queen of wands. But this is how you look at yourself. And this four of pentacles, like spirit is saying, you're dreaming too small. And the lovers talks about decisions that have to be made. Ten of wands, like carrying too much, too much of a burden. If you let go, if you let go of this need for control, if you start dreaming bigger, you can have a wish come true, a really big wish come true. I actually want to pull a couple more cards for you. Because it kind of feels like a little bit, not a warning, but just some words of advice, I feel like, from your guides of saying, stop thinking so small. Dream a little, dare to dream a little bit bigger, dare to hope again. Like, it, it feels like you're afraid to say what you really, really want or to admit to yourself how badly you want it, the seven of pentacles, 
there's this narrative where you feel like you work hard, you put in the effort, you wait for success. You work hard, you put in the effort, you wait for success. Okay, I'm not getting that success. I guess I have to work even harder. Okay, I'm not getting that success. I guess I have to work even harder. Spirit is saying like that ambition, that resiliency, that work ethic, that drive that you have, that tenacity that you have is admirable. However, it's not getting you where you want to go. What is going to get you where you want to go is to work with spirit and to, yeah. I mean, now I'm seeing the six of wands and justice here. Spirit is saying, like, you deserve to be successful. You deserve to feel victorious. And with the five of wands as your bottom of the deck, maybe, like, what you want, there's a lot of competition for it. Or it's something that's seen as hard to obtain, hard to achieve. And that's why you're okay with being patient. But I feel like Spirit is saying, like, it's almost like you having so much, um, you having so much control over it, this tight grip, or this idea of, like, how it has to come about, or this limiting belief, you know, this narrative that you have that success doesn't come without hard work is holding you back. And I think that's going to be a lesson for you in the, you know, next year, that's going to be a lesson for you. But I feel like you can, you can change this, right? Like, this is just the current energy for you, you know, the current prediction, but you can change this if you change your mindset. So Whatever it is that you're wanting success in, whatever it is that you've been patient about and been putting in a lot of effort, karmically, you already deserve it. Spirit recognizes that. Like, you do deserve this. Your heart is in the right place. You do deserve this. So let it be yours. I feel like you have an opportunity to change this. And it's a good thing that you're watching this reading because you can change your mindset now. And instead of four of pentacles, ten of wands, page of wands, we can be seeing the justice card, the six of wands instead. And not, you know, the seven of pentacles is a really frustrating energy sometimes. Because I feel like you've had enough of this. And you may be looking around, seeing other people doing less than you and doing better and then thinking you're not good enough. And Spirit is saying, no, 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 no. It's not your talent. It's not your work ethic. It's not your skill level. It's this, this energy of desperation. And this energy of thinking that, again, like you have to work twice as hard as other people to get anywhere in life. And that's just not the case. Because it feels like, it's, to me, there's this energy of, like, why am I being punished? Is Maybe this isn't my path. And then you second guess it. And then you get all upset. And I feel like spirit really wants to change this story for you. They want to change that narrative. But, I mean, you can change it for yourself at any time. I don't like to lecture a lot, <laughs> you know, in readings or to have it come off that way. But... I feel like it's very important to recognize that you do have control over this energy and you can alter it. You can change it. You can decide with the lovers. This is a decision. So instead of being in that masculine energy, be in your feminine. Receive abundance. Receive blessings. You've already done the work. You've done more than enough. Okay. So October, November, December, your reading's going by kind of fast, <laughs> okay? October, November, December, for my pile twos, October, November, December, 2023, pile two. What do we need to know? And we will be getting a final oracle card for you guys as well. I just wasn't feeling that. October, November, December. Ooh, 
the chariot. I love this. I love this. So the chariot is cancer energy. Um, it's also a card that talks about success. It talks about being in the driver's seat of your own life, feeling like you have control. We've got the justice again. And this says, what does this say? By the queen, a proclamation, now know ye, but we are graciously extending our grace and mercy to our free royal pardon. All sentences are to be commuted by her majesty's command. Okay, we'll get into that in a second. I'm seeing, oh, that's funny, the hanged man. The hanged man is literally waiting for death. <laughs> like the hanged man comes, comes before the death card in tarot. So that's actually kind of hilarious. <laughs> Okay, we've got the Page of Swords. And bottom of the deck here, we've got the Five of Pentacles. This is so funny. This is so funny. Okay. And I'm also seeing the Five of Wands here as well. So, this is laying out, like, by the end of the year, I think you, you finally understand or you have accepted that the universe spirit is not punishing you. <laughs> like you have kind of felt like you just couldn't get anywhere. You couldn't get where you were going. And some of you also come from a family background where it is really hard to achieve financial security. You know, like you may have grown up in a household where there was a lot of scarcity, where there was a lot of financial instability and a lot of limiting beliefs around money. I grew up in that kind of environment, so I, like I get it. Um, and it feels like spirit's kind of trying to drag you away from that, but also with like the church here, trying to drag you away from old methods that just aren't working. Um, it even says like Queen Alice up here, like just trying to drag you away from this set idea of like who you are and who you should be. Because some of you may really pride yourself on being a hard worker and Spirit is saying instead of having this narrative of like, I work so hard, I work so hard, why don't you change that and say how talented you are, how skillful you are instead of glorifying how hard of a worker you are and how self-disciplined you are, why don't you recognize your own strengths? Because it's almost like you don't see value in what you are innately good at. You only see value in things that you think you have earned. And Spirit is saying, you know, you were born with all of these blessings, just like everyone else has their own unique skills and talents and abilities. And we just kind of want you to recognize that you're good enough just as you are, and you don't have to prove yourself because there's this energy of you feeling like you have to prove yourself, you know, like you have to work harder than everybody else just to be able to say, I work so much harder than everybody else because it's like a chip on your shoulder kind of thing. Like a, this need to like prove your self-worth and spirit is saying, no, like you have innate value and it's okay to like play to your strengths as well. Um, and so you kind of feel like it's almost like this energy of like feeling stuck and feeling stagnant and like you're running in place, running in place and you can't get out of it. And at the end of the year, you kind of feel like the reins have been handed back over to you. Like you've been granted your freedom again. I kind of feel like spirit wanted you to get this and to kind of build up your self-confidence so that when success came to you, in whatever form, you know, again, this can be talking about love life in whatever form that that looks like to you, you would be in a place where you could handle it. Because spirit can give you all the success in the world. And you can still drop the ball, right? And spirit wanted you to be in a place where you would feel like you deserved it. And where you wouldn't feel imposter syndrome. Um, this, you know, this can look like, for example, 
you've been wanting to, you know, meet your future spouse and spirit delivers you the perfect person, but because you have these insecurities, you self-sabotage and it doesn't work out. Something like that. Or you get offered a promotion or a new job opportunity and it's the career position of your dreams, but you have imposter syndrome and you compare yourself to others and then you question, do you really deserve it? And it doesn't work out. So it's that don't shoot yourself in the foot kind of feeling. And so it's not that spirit has been trying to keep you tied up and hold you back from your destiny and, you know, take away your free will or punish you in any way. But it's like they want to trust you with the sword. <laughs> you know, they want to trust you with like your graduation papers, you know, like they want to trust you and they want to feel like, because they don't doubt your talents, your skills, your abilities, your lovability. Like no one is saying you're not lovable or you're not smart enough or talented enough. It's not that. It's a question of self-worth and feeling like you deserve it and not feeling like you have to earn someone else's love or someone else's approval or someone else's validation. Spirit wants that to come from you internally and from your connection to the divine. Yeah. So there is a lot here about self-development. There's a lot here about self-worth. There's a lot here about not trying the same old methods and being open to receiving and being in a more feminine energy. And to trust and know that you are 100% deserving of everything that you have been wanting and that you are actually on the right path in terms of your purpose, your destiny. You are going after the right things. You're not desiring the wrong things. So don't feel like you're being held back because it's not the right path. It is the right path. Let's get your final oracle message. So pile two, what major theme... 2023, pile two, major theme, pile two, <laughs> meditation for clarity. It's seeing yourself clearly because I feel like you see how it looks like just a shadow here. It's like that's all you see within yourself are these shadow aspects. It's good to integrate your shadow. It's good to have self-awareness, but you need to see like your light too. I feel like there's an energy of you dimming your own light and spirit wanting you to see yourself beyond your shadow aspects. It's like you're, most people can't see their own shadow, but you're quite the opposite. You are fully aware of your shadow. It's your good qualities that you minimize. I think... Spirit wants you to see your value and not be so hard on yourself. And again, like you can change this now and you will find that six of wands. You can, you will find that success before October, November, December. You can find it a whole three months earlier in the year. It's just, a, it's just, you know, a matter of seeing that self-worth, of seeing your value, of changing that narrative. Okay, so pile two, this was your reading. I hope it resonated. I hope it was helpful. Please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Hit the notification bell so you always know when I upload. The easiest way to support the channel is to watch the ads. Um, you can also tip now with super thanks. It's like a virtual tip jar. Always appreciated, but not expected, of course. And a huge thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel thus far. Um, yeah, I will see you all in my next one. I hope you all have the best December.
Hey pile three, if you chose Sailor Jupiter, you are in the right place. Hopefully she stays. So we're gonna start with January, February, March. And I'll go ahead and say a big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. And we are just gonna do all uprights, please spirit. No reversals today. All right, January, February, March, pile three. Hopefully with Sailor Jupiter, it's a lucky year. <laughs> I feel like Sailor Jupiter has just the nicest, sweetest, like most nurturing energy. She just has mom vibes to her. I love her. Oh man, come on Sailor Jupiter. Don't give up on me. Maybe she doesn't like being told she has mom vibes. <laughs> okay. All right, January, February, March. January, February, March. Pile three. We've got the moon. I think pile one also got the moon card in their, at their start of the year. It makes sense, you know, like you start off the year maybe a bit uncertain about certain things. You like that, uncertain about certain things. <laughs> Sometimes I just crack myself up, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Oh man, the Ace of Swords too. Oh, I love this. Okay. And that's beautiful too, because your bottom of the deck is the Two of Swords. So it could be, my, my stomach just growled. Sorry guys. Uh, it could be that in December, you are feeling indecisive about something. There's something that you know you have to make a decision on. I feel like sometimes the Two of Swords gets a bad rep because it's not the Seven of Cups. You know, it's not like you're having analysis paralysis. Two of swords to me means you go somewhere quiet, you tell people, don't bother me. You put your blindfold on and you wait. You wait for guidance. You wait for your intuition to kick in. You wait for some kind of psychic download to come through. Like you just wait until you figure it out. You know, you're not listening to other people's opinions or thoughts. You're just getting quiet saying, leave me alone, don't come near me until I've worked this out. So I actually feel like the Two of Swords is kind of smart, you know? Like, if you don't know what to do, if you're stuck, get quiet, stop trying to figure it out. Just get quiet, meditate, and let the answer come to you because they always say, all answers are within, go within. The Two of Swords is going within. So... That aha moment, that's going to come to you January, February, March. Because with the two of wands here, for some of you, like you want to move somewhere. You want to go somewhere. You want to do something. But I'm sorry, someone is parked outside of my house. And I'm like, what are you? That might be my Walmart order. Okay, <laughs> so you're trying to figure it out. So some of you, maybe you want to move somewhere. You want to start over at a new job. Maybe you're thinking about starting to date again. You know, there's some kind of change that you're wanting to make that involves you having to like get out of your house and do something. And you're just not sure though. There's something about it that's holding you back or you're very certain about what you want to do. Like, I think moving's an easy example. Like, you know you want to move, but you don't know how you'll have enough money or resources to make it happen. Or you know you, you want to move, but you're not sure where you want to move. You know, there's something there that's keeping you not making a decision about it. And so January, February, March, you're, you're being given that epiphany moment, that aha moment. This is an answer coming from like the clouds, right? It's coming from the divine. So you're going to get that moment of clarity. And so this uncertainty that you feel, it's not going to last. The path will be illuminated to you and you will know where to go. Now, that's not saying that there's not still an element of risk here or, you know, having to have faith, having to take a gamble, having to take, you know, a risk. There may still be that, but I feel like you're being assured that 
you are making the best possible decision, which is great. Like that's what you want to feel, <laughs> you know? Um, so to get that reassurance is so awesome. And with the King of Wands, I mean, this is someone who takes action. This is someone when they commit to something, they do it. And so once you come to that decision, you follow through. You're not in the two of wands. You will move. You will go after it. You will make that change. And even though there's no guarantee because there's never any guarantees in life, you're not scared because intuitively it feels right. And you're getting those signs from the universe that are telling you green light go. And so you feel very reassured by that. You feel very comforted by that. And with the little lizard here, like it is a change. It is a transformation. And not only is this change in your external environment, because you're making a real world change. You're doing something. You're moving towards something and away from something else. And that change in your external environment is also going to spark a change within you. And it's going to, so you're going to feel energetically so much better. You're going to wake up and have more energy. You're going to feel happier with your choices. You're going to feel at peace with them. And you're going to feel like you did the right thing for you. So there's more pep in your step, you know, um, once you have committed to this plan of action. And you are going to see it through. And it is going to work out. Um, it may not work out exactly how you plan it. Cause again, like the moon, like there's no exact guarantee of how it's all going to play out, but it is the best possible decision for you. It is in alignment with the greatest potential for your happiness. Okay. All right. So let's move on. That's a very positive start to your year. I'm glad to see it. So April, May, and June. April, May, and June. What have we got going on? April, May, and June for my pile threes. I think I'm going to take a break after your reading before I film the other two. I'm really bad about being like, okay, I'm starting to film, so I have to do it all in one go. And I'm trying to be a little bit better about just taking a break and resting my voice. Especially when I film those monthly like love readings, they'll be like four hours long. That's a long time to sit and talk. <laughs> like, even for me. <laughs> okay. April, May, June, pile three. What do we have going on? We've got the seven of wands. April, May, June. We've got temperance. I think this is such a beautiful temperance card. The Eight of Cups. And strength, man, I love this for you. I love this for you so much, okay? I just love it. So this seven of wands, look at this little guy. Look at how he's prepared himself. He knows this is coming and he's protected himself against it. There's something there about spirit being so incredibly proud of you during these months because there's something in your life that you know like a certain storm is coming. Like you know there's something in your life that's just not sustainable. That has been like a pressure cooker, but you haven't been sure, you haven't been clear about how to get out of it. And yet you do. So it's like the first three months, you get the answer that you need about what to do, how to do it. Seven of Wands, April, May, June, you start preparing. 
and then Eight of Cups, you actually walk away. We talked about walking away from something and moving towards something else. Eight of Cups, you during April, May, June, you are walking away from that thing that wasn't sustainable. And you are doing it with grace, grace and strength. Do you know how incredibly beautiful these two energies are? And you are embodying both of them. It's like she's standing above the belly of a monster and holding it back, this little girl. And she's doing it. Like, and, and you're, you're handling this ending with such grace and such poise. This is going to create such incredibly good karma for you. Like, I can't... The way that you do this is masterful, though. They're telling me it's masterful. Like, they are so incredibly proud of you. Because you knew intuitively, with the tower being at the bottom of the deck, you knew that if you didn't walk away, this was going to happen. You knew it. You knew it in your bones. Like, you knew, I, I can't keep doing this. Because if I don't, if I don't walk away, spirit is going to knock me out. Like they're going to knock me out of this tower. Like whatever this tower is, whether it's a job, a relationship, a certain connection, a certain environment, you knew it wasn't stable. And the fact that you walk away from it with such grace and dignity and you don't, because of the way that you handle this, you don't walk away from that person, place, or thing with hate in your heart, with regret, with anger, with resentment. And because of that, you're truly free from it. Your heart is as light as a feather, they're telling me. And that will just continue to build this momentum of good karma. You are setting yourself up for a major blessing because of how you handle this. It's like whatever lesson you were meant to learn, you mastered it. Whatever that cycle was meant to teach you, you said thank you next. Like, I, I, I am, I'm kind of at a loss for words because I, I feel like even spirit, it's almost just like tears in your eyes kind of energy of where you're just so proud of yourself. And you never would have thought you would have been capable of this. And yet you do it. What a... Man. <laughs> pile... Pile three. Yeah, I mean... Intemperance. Luck. Luck will be on your side. Fortune will favor you because of this. There will be a faded blessing that will come from this. Because, you know, with the Eight of Cups, nothing is ever taken away from you. You never, if something isn't serving you and you walk away, it's because there's something better, right? That's the whole nature of the Eight of Cups. It's not the Ten. So there's something better. There's something better Spirit has in store for you. All right, July, August, September. July, August, September, Pile 3. What's going on for them? 2023, July, August, September. July, August, September. Your reading's different because there's a very clear story. It's, it doesn't feel disjointed. Twenty twenty three here. July, August, September. July, August, September. July, August, September. <laughs> I just love the way this page of pentacles is depicted here. July, August, September. July, August, September. We've got the emperor. The sun. Oh man, card flew on the floor. The Four of Cups. Mm. 
and your bottom of the deck is the five of pentacles. So if you were dealing with something that was financially keeping you trapped, you were feeling stuck because of finances, that would be definitely what would be clearing out for you. That, that energy we were picking up in the beginning of the year of you being stuck because of something, if it was financial resources, you can have that reassurance that that would be on the way out. Okay, with the Page of Pentacles, the Emperor, the Sun, and the Four of Cups, for some of you, you were wanting financial freedom from something. You were wanting to have... You, the, your guides are really telling me, like, you felt like money... You felt like a lack of money was keeping you trapped. And so now this abundance of money is giving you your freedom. And it's almost like you couldn't see the abundance that was coming in. Like you couldn't see how you were going to have this up leveling in your material resources. But you are getting it. It's like spirit is giving you the coin and you're running with it. You are from a page of pentacles to an emperor. That's amazing. That's incredible growth. It's like you never thought that you could go from this. You always saw yourself as a page to the emperor. This is someone who owns their own business, someone who's in a management leadership position. The emperor is so confident they can walk around in their underwear because they're the boss. No one can tell the emperor that they can't do this. The emperor can make a fool out of himself and nobody can say boo about it. And the sun just illuminates everything, happiness and optimism. And with the four of cups, like you don't think this is possible. Like you watching this now don't think this is possible. You couldn't see it from where you were at before. And remember how we said like you were destined you are building up good karma and you were destined for this blessing because of, you know, how much grace and dignity you had through that ending. Well, here it is. Here's the blessing. Your freedom. And we understand that money offers us freedom. We get that, right? That's the score in our society. That's how it's set up. And so you're getting that. And so you're free to live your life in the manner that you choose. Because the pentacles can also talk about our day-to-day -day routines. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this is so positive. You're getting your wings. You never thought you would get these wings, but you're getting your wings. Okay. I won't keep repeating myself. It's just good news. All right, October, November, December. It's funny because I was talking about fate and destiny and then we have Jupiter, luck, wheel of fortune. Like, I love this. October, November, December, pile three. Pile three, October, November, December. For some of you, it really is a new living situation because with Sailor Jupiter, like I, I tend to think of her as like a homemaker because she's so good at decorating and cooking and cleaning and like those divine feminine sort of things. Um, and she is funny because you also got the strength card and she definitely represents strength. Um, yeah, for some of you, it's it's a new home and being able to be the head of your own household, to make your own choices in your own space, having dominion over your, over your own space. So if you're leaving behind like a bad, a bad living situation with a partner where you have like shared financial resources or a bad living situation with a roommate, or maybe you were living with family and that was really oppressive for you. Again, that's a, that's a specific example, but I am picking that up for a lot of you actually. Okay. October, November, December, 2023. The star. So a wish is coming true with the star. 
We've got the Eight of Cups again. We've got the Three of Cups. Got one to two more cards here. October, November, December. The Three of Swords. And your bottom of the deck is actually the Queen of Pentacles here. I'm sorry if you hear the sirens. I live near a fire station. Okay. With the Eight of Cups, remember how we said that you were building some good karma from how you handled when you walked away and all that stuff. To me, this is saying because you handled this so well, this is what we were talking about. Like, this is that big wish fulfillment coming in, your good karma. Like, it's just continuing from the previous quarter that we were just discussing. So, whatever you've been wishing for, you're seeing that manifest in October, November, December. And for some of you, it's also public recognition. It's also public recognition. And... Because a star card can carry an element of celebrity to it. And I say that also because you have the three of cups. So like people are celebrating your success. And so you have good people around you who are genuinely happy for you. And I also feel like sometimes when we walk away from something that's really painful, we're not ready to open up about it right away. But I think that if you were to share your story later on, October, November, December, when you were ready to, people would cheers you. People would be so happy for you and would actually learn a lot from your story. And this grief, loss, disappointment, heartbreak, all of that, each sword was a lesson. Like I always, like the three of swords, I came to this realization, um, a couple weeks ago, I think, where I started to think about it, you know, the Three of Swords talks about grief, loss, disappointment, heartbreak, but it's not a cups card, it's a swords card. And I was like, you know, each sword also kind of represents a lesson that the mind had to learn. Like this heartbreak, this loss, this disappointment, it's just a lesson you're meant to learn. You know, it's it's... It's something that, honestly, your heart already knew. It's our minds that lie to us, right? Our minds that talk us out of the red flags that our intuition and our heart pick up on, right? It's the mind that, that has to learn. It's the ego that has to learn. And I feel like you can... I, I feel like you've gained enough strength in 2023 to know that if this energy ever came back around again, you would know how to walk away and you would feel good about it. Like, I, I feel like you have a peace of mind that you have learned this lesson and that, again, if the energy ever came back around, even in a different form, you would have no hesitation about walking away again because you know what is on the other side of that is wish fulfillment, is getting what you truly want and what you truly deserve. And that the right people will always celebrate you walking away from what doesn't serve you and the right people won't convince you to stay somewhere that's not really of your highest good. And with the Queen of Pentacles, I just feel like financially, in terms of your career, your stability, you're sitting pretty. Like you're just really doing something that you love, something that you enjoy, something that allows you to be creative. And you're not going back to the old ways. You know, like you've gotten your independence. You're no longer dependent upon somebody else. You're not feeling financially trapped and stuck anywhere you feel like you have enough resources now where again if this energy ever came back around again you would have the financial resources the inner strength and the confidence to walk away uh, you're reading maybe my favorite so far pal three this is incredible this is a this is really a year of self-empowerment and getting your own ducks in a row and feeling and feeling like you get to you get to work hard to play hard. You know what I mean? Like it's not all struggle anymore. And because you're doing what you love, 
it doesn't feel so stressful anymore. It doesn't feel like you're wasting your capabilities and your potential anymore. So let's get a final oracle message for you, pile three, to close out your reading. Pile three, 2023, pile three, 20. That was my hand that slipped. Pile 2023. Oh, you get two cards. Look at you. We get listening to wisdom and we have water magic here. Okay, so with this listening to wisdom card, I feel like this is picking up on the beginning of your year where we were talking about you getting quiet, you sitting still, listening for that guidance from spirit, getting that Ace of Swords moment, listening to your heart, your intuition. And this water magic is like this healing, this alchemizing, the pain, the heartbreak, the loss, the disappointment from the past, and alchemizing it into self-love, self-confidence, self-worth, positive connections with other people alchemizing into manifesting your heart's desires with the star card. Transmuting that energy into something you actually want. Pile three, what a beautiful reading and you have such a lovely, lovely, lovely energy pile three. Thank you so much for letting me do this reading for you. Please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing hit the notification bell so you always know when I upload. The easiest way to support the channel is to watch the ads. You can also tip now with super thanks. It's like a virtual tip jar. A huge thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel thus far. It means the world to me. And I will see you all in my next one. Take care, pile three. Hey Pile 4, welcome to your reading. So if you chose Sailor Mars, you are in the right place. We're going to start off with January, February, March. A big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. And we'll do all uprights, no reversals today from Spirit. Sailor Mars, Pile 4, what do we have going on? 2023, January, February, March. So let's see, we've got the Magician. That's a beautiful energy to start off your reading. January, February, March. Ooh, the Queen of Pentacles, get it, okay. All right, guys, I see you, pile four. <laughs> pile four. The Two of Pentacles here. And the Ten of Wands. Okay. Bottom of the deck here, we have the Devil. And with this Devil card in particular, I'm really just kind of picking up on the energy of Capricorn. Like, I feel like the first three months of 2023, you're just really, really hard at work. Um, if anything, you could be overworking yourself with the Ten of Wands. And that's why we're seeing the devil card as your bottom of the deck, because spirit is saying, you know, you're being a little bit of a workaholic maybe in the first three months. Um, you're kind of overextending yourself and, you know, just be mindful of burnout in that case, um, if that's resonating. But it just seems like you're really focused on Capricorn type of things. You know, you're focused on your career, you're focused on status, you're focused on achievement. Um, and with the Queen of Pentacles here, we have Capricorn energy again, but also Taurus and Virgo. So really focusing on 
how do I get myself to this place of financial abundance? How do I get myself to this place of, you know, luxury of enjoying what I have and feeling stable and secure within it? Um, so I definitely feel like you're trying to manifest this abundance and you're very detail oriented about it. You're being very, um, very careful and very intentional because I feel like you all have a very clear vision for what you're wanting to achieve here, what you're wanting to call in. And it, it feels like you're juggling a lot, like you're focusing on the manifestation part, but you're also focusing on working hard and putting in the effort. And for a lot of you with the Queen of Pentacles, it's not just about the coin, you know, it's not just about the money. It's about the home. It's about the garden. Like the queen of pentacles is always in this lush garden. So you're definitely wanting it all. Sailor Mars wants it all. Okay. Like she's the, I think she's the one who wants to be, um, she wants to be like a superstar. You know, she wants success in all areas. And I feel like that's, I feel like that's, that's what it is. And so I, I do feel like the first three months are going to be abundant for you, but I think it's a lot about building abundance. And so it's like the good things that come in, you're looking at it and you're saying, how can I capitalize and expand more? And so spirit gives you more and then you're wanting to expand more. And so you're quite ambitious. And I feel like spirit is saying, you're doing a great job juggling and balancing all of these things. But at the same time, we do want you to stop and enjoy some of this abundance that's coming in. We don't want you to get so caught up on the next thing that you're, you're not pausing to recognize and appreciate your wins and your successes. Because when you pause and you're, you take that moment of appreciation to be proud of yourself, you're also taking a moment to pause and to be grateful because you're not doing it all on your own. You're co-creating with spirit. And so there is a need for rest here as well. And a need for you to acknowledge your own hard work, but also acknowledge the work of spirit and how spirit has worked in your favor to help you call in all of this abundance. I'll give you a personal example of this. Um, when I graduated with my bachelor's degree in psychology, I was so anxious. And it's definitely, I think, a product of our society or even like my family system. Everyone kept asking me like, well, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Really, people should just shut up and say congratulations is what they should do because it's really mean to do to, to do that to someone who's graduating because we know the job market is scary and we know the economy at least in America, isn't the best. And so, you know, it's kind of mean to do that to a new graduate. And I'm going through that again, like I'm graduating with my master's in social work. And I, I found myself doing that again, where I was just so anxious. And I was like, you know what? No, like, I made straight A's throughout my entire grad program. I need to sit down and be proud of myself. I need to celebrate. I need to be happy. I need to just acknowledge that I did this. And I, and I feel like that's important for you in the first three months of the year to every little win, every little milestone you reach, take a moment and be proud of yourself and be grateful to spirit that they have helped you get to that point because you are absolutely co-creating with spirit. Okay. So let's continue onward. So we've got January, February, March. Now let's do April, May, and June. Pile four. Yeah, pile four. <laughs> April, May, June. Pile four. April, May, June. What do you got going on, pile fours? Whoops. Let's flip that back over. There's another one. There we go. April, May, June. Four. We've got the Page of Swords here. I 
tell you, like, self-doubt is not holding you back in 2023. Like, I'm not saying that you're not going to have any fears or any anxieties, but you're not letting it get the best of you. It's like you're afraid and still doing it. You may have some insecurities and you're still doing it. Like, you are just full throttle going after, like, what you want. And you're not letting any insecurities get the best of you. Yeah, the page of wands, like you're, you're facing some of your fears. You're being so brave in 2023. Like you're, you're not holding any punches like whatsoever. Don't want to get in trouble. Like you are just, man, <laughs> queen of pentacles again. You are in your coin. You are in your bag. <laughs> I'm telling you, 2023 is going to be a great year for you financially. <laughs> Ace of Pentacles, shut up. Okay, this is the year of you getting your finances together, together of you getting your money right, your career right. Oh man, like you are just going for it. And there's an element here of you speaking your dreams into existence. You speaking your abundance into existence. And you are so completely and entirely wrapped up in divine support. Like spirit has your back. Spirit is rooting for you. And I feel like that's why even though you're afraid... Like, see how she's holding the sword in her mouth? Like, she's speaking her positive intentions, her positive affirmations into those base level fears. And so she's, she's just pushing it down. Like, no, like, you're not going to get the best of me. My ego, my fear can speak up and I hear you, but you're not getting the best of me. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to be blind to my own fears here. I'm not going to take off my crown. And that garden that we were talking about, she's wearing a regular crown and a flower crown here. Like, there's some really big things you have cooking in 2023. And you are just completely, bravely going for it. And you're wrapped up in that divine support. And so you should be terrified. And maybe you are. But it's like it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Like you are facing your own fears head on. You're trying new things. You're exploring new things. I feel like in terms of your routine, you don't have one anymore. Like you're just, you're just shaking things up. You know, you're getting out of your comfort zone. Your life doesn't look the same next year. I mean, for many of you, like you're starting a new job, you're starting a new project. You could be moving house. Like everything is different. Everything is changing. And you're no longer, you're not a slave to the money anymore. It's like you've mastered the energy of it. You've made it your friend. Some of you had some real fears around money and like scarcity. And now you see yourself as the manifester of your own coin. It's like very powerful energy here. And you feel very enveloped in this sense of like self, self-reliance. Like you don't feel like you have to count on someone else for financial stability anymore. Like you're living by your own wits here. Stephen King said that one time and it really stuck with me. He's like, I'm just living by my own wits. Like... What he does for a living doesn't require anything at all other than his own mind and some paper and a pen. Living by your own wits. Like, you're making money from something that you are just innately good at. And for a long time, your fears may have told you, no, you're not good enough. You're not talented enough to do that. You can't call yourself a writer, an artist, an entrepreneur, whatever. Like you can't call yourself that. And you're like, I am that. That is my identity. I am that. Like you're owning it. There's so much here about being the master of your own fate, but not seeing spirit as the enemy, seeing again spirit as your partner. 
And the bottom of the deck here, we have the Hierophant. So you are going from student to teacher. You have mastered this. This is incredible. This is incredible. Okay. <laughs> like what a powerful energy pile four. And you know, if you think about the energy of four, it's about stability. It's about our daily routines. It's about structure. And it's like that area of your life. It's like you just threw a firework into it. And now like you're glowing up, you know, like things are being shaken up. Things are being alchemized and shifted so that you are now the driver of this story. Okay. July, August, September, pile four. The energy feels kind of intense. Like I'm having to like readjust myself as I'm shuffling because it feels, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it feels quite intense, this energy. Not surprising. I mean, it's Sailor Mars, right? <laughs> Okay. That's wild. You've got three swords cards. And you're the fourth group. This deck has been shuffled so much. <laughs> okay. So we've got the six of swords. We have the ace of swords. We have the knight of swords. And we have the nine of pentacles. There's a lot going on for you mentally in this third quarter with all of the swords energy. And it really feels like you have this energy up of protecting yourself and seeing yourself as your own knight in shining armor. Like seeing yourself as the one who comes in and saves you. Because Six of Swords talks about someone coming in and helping us, offering us assistance, taking us away from a bad situation. And it feels like to me, with this Knight of Swords and this Ace of Swords here, it's like you weren't getting that help. And so you turned to Spirit and said, I have no one in my life who can help me. Can you help me? And Spirit came in and offered you some sort of like epiphany aha moment. And it came in and showed you how to get out of it yourself. So it's like Spirit taught you this mental sort of resiliency. Because I feel like you always had the ability to get yourself out. But maybe it was kind of like you just doubted your own capabilities or you or that fear was rising up. And so it's like this mental toughness had to develop where because remember we had that card with the girl with the sword in her mouth and it was stabbing that the darkness and all those eyes at the bottom of the card. Here, I'll find it. Yeah, this this page of swords. Like you had to develop this mental toughness, this ability to see your own abundance and self-worth and your own potential essentially. And so this mental toughness, it's like it has solidified by this third quarter. And because of that, you're in this nine of pentacles. This is like money, money. Okay. Like this is like, I have more than enough. This is a wish coming true. Like, she has strung together these uh, pentacles here. It's like a banner. It's a banner of success. I'm congratulating myself here. I'm celebrating myself here. So you've achieved something big, some sort of financial goal by this third quarter. You've done it. And you've done it by this, like, mental tenacity of, like, I'm not giving up. I'm just going to keep pushing at it because I know I'm smart enough. I know I'm talented enough. I know that I'm good enough for this. Like, it's just, and no one can tell you otherwise. No one can put you out of this. You are just so certain. You have so much certainty about this. And you're very clear on your vision. And you know exactly 
the steps that you need to take to continue to grow this. So there's a real element here of you being the master of your own fate, but that vision that you have is fully supported by the divine. The divine agrees with you. Yes, this is your purpose. Let's do it. And you may find yourself too, um, sort of like this visionary energy of you making certain plans in that third quarter of how to expand upon your success even more. Yeah, there's a visionary kind of energy to that. Okay. October, November, December. It's like the success that you experience forces you to dream even bigger, think even bigger. Okay. Um, so for example, like if you were starting your own business and it took off, you were like, okay, maybe we need to start thinking about creating a website and selling our product online to expand even more. Something like that. It's just a very basic exa example, but I think you get what I'm talking about. October, November, December, pile four. What do we need to know? Pile four. October, November, December. We've got the page of wands here. We've got the emperor. Queen of cups. Ten of Cups. I want to get one more. Woo! <laughs> one more card. Ah, the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, okay. For many of you, I just really see this as you either owning your own business or you doing something that gives you the freedom to make your own choices in your work. So like you're in some kind of leadership, management, supervising kind of role because this isn't an energy where you answer to people. And nothing about what we have seen previously seemed like you were answering to anybody. And I like to see this water energy come in because so much of your reading has been focused upon the material, right? And so to see some emotional fulfillment is really, really positive and really good to see. Um, and I feel like with the Knight of Pentacles here, by the end of the year, you are feeling like you can slow down a little bit and get more of a routine going. It doesn't feel like things are so fast moving and changing and you having to adapt to success, having to adapt to success. Because, you know, yes, success is a positive thing, but it's still the energy of change. And it still requires us to adapt. And sometimes, you know, like the more money that comes in, the more responsibilities that you have, the more your workload grows as there's a greater demand for your product or your services. You know, um, you're, you know, you see that too. Like when you get a promotion, like your responsibilities typically become greater. Um, you know, you have more people answering to you, more people asking you questions, more people needing your approval on things. So yeah, you're absolutely in a boss energy <laughs> throughout most of the year. But then at the end of the year, it feels like you can finally start to enjoy this success and get some more stability in your routine, connect more back with family and friends, connect more back to yourself and what emotionally keeps you fulfilled. And it's not that you're not still dreaming and not you don't still have more plans for expansion. But I think at the end of the year, you are coming back into, okay, maybe it is time to slow down a little bit. We'll start hard at work in a couple months from now, but let's just enjoy this success. Let's take a moment to sit back and appreciate everything that we have built. And when I say we, I mean you and spirit. You and spirit always. Um, 
And, you know, it's not surprising because usually at the end of the year, there's a lot of holidays. We typically do spend more time with our family and our loved ones and things like that. Um, I feel like also if you were hoping for some love messages, I mean, with the Queen and the Ten of Cups, there definitely could be um, some more romantic energy finally coming in in October, November, and December for you, especially with the Page of Wands. That can also be some spicy energy. So... Um, definitely be on the lookout for that, especially too, if you're a divine feminine and you're wanting to call in a divine masculine, that could be this emperor, you know, and attracting someone who's on your level in terms of success. So that could be great as well. Yeah, I think that's all I'm seeing for your end of the year. It just looks like you get some downtime to enjoy your life and enjoy everything that you've been hard at work on because again like financially things are looking awesome so having some time to actually enjoy that i think is going to be really wonderful and really needed really needed for you okay so let me put these cards up and then we're gonna get an oracle card just to get an overall theme for your 2023 here pile for overall theme for 2023 we've got <laughs> no kidding planting the seeds we talked about the queen of pentacles um having this lush garden right and now you have plant the seeds that's what you're doing all year long like you're planting the seeds you're harvesting planting more seeds harvesting planting more seeds harvesting um it feels like kind of this midas touch like everything you touch turns to gold in 2023 and you know like the ground is fertile like spirit is supporting you and it's a really nice balance between hard work and manifestation and co-creating with the universe i mean yeah i mean i don't feel like i need to keep repeating myself but i just love so much that this was that this was your message and i think it's super cute here too like the fact that her and her partner are, are walking through the garden together so by the end of the year, you could also have someone to share all of your success with, you know, like you, you've created this beautiful garden and now you have someone to stroll through it with you. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so pile four, this was your reading. I hope it resonated. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Hit the notification bell so you always know when I upload. Um, the easiest way to support the channel is to watch the ads. You can also donate now with Super Thanks. It's like a virtual tip jar. Never uh, expected, but always appreciated. And also a huge thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel thus far. Huge thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you so much. And I hope you all have the best December. I'm very excited for you for 2023. It looks amazing. And yeah, take care, Pile 4. Hey Pile 5, if you chose Sailor Venus, you are in the right place. How cute is her little bow? I just love her hair. Okay, so we're going to put her over here. Hopefully she stands up. Everyone else did. Come on, Sailor Venus. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to start off with January, February, and March. And I'll go ahead and say a big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. And we will say all uprights, please, Spirit. No reversals. We're not doing that today. All right. Pile 5, Sailor Venus, January, February, March. Pile 5. And if you skip the intro, I am going to be uploading a separate love prediction. Um, I don't know if it'll be up before or after this video, so just make sure you're subscribed and you have no the notification bell <laughs> turned on. Okay, pile five. 
January, February, March. What do we need to know for my pile fives, please, Spirit? Okay, pile four also started off with the magician, so that's awesome. Well, they had a great reading, so hopefully you do too. We've got the ace. The ace of swords has also been coming out a lot. The hanged unicorn. The star. Okay, your bottom of the deck is the seven of swords. So in the year 2022, you may have dealt with a lot of energy vampires or sort of this energy of people lying to you, wearing a false mask, pretending to be in your corner, but really being super happy when you failed. You may have dealt with some cheating, some people being dishonest, people having ulterior motives. This isn't a great card. This is someone stealing something from you, whether it's, you know, betraying your trust, actually taking things from you, taking opportunities away from you. It's not a good energy. So it's very, very positive to see this, you know, be leaving your, you know, your energy field. So we have the magician, we have the ace of swords, the hanged unicorn and the star. So January, February, March, there's something that has been making you feel stuck, you know, something that you weren't sure what to do about it. And so because you weren't sure what to do, you couldn't see a way out, you know, in a practical real world sense. And so you turn to spirituality, you know, and that's the right thing to do. Spirit saying you did the right thing. Like if, if something's too heavy to carry, what do you do? You give it over to God. And so, you know, you gave it over to spirit. You gave it over to the universe. You said, I don't know what to do. And when you feel trapped and you feel like you don't have control over something, you got to manifest a way out. And so like you were doing your manifestation rituals, you were trying to see things from a higher perspective. You were praying, you were wishing, you were hoping on a star. You were doing all of that. You were trying to mentally keep your mind, you know, positive and clear. And it could have had something to do with the seven of swords energy. And so this means with the ace of swords here, like getting clarity on something. I feel like you were seeing a way out of it. Six of cups. What you're manifesting in those first three months or the prayer that's being granted, the wish that's being granted, the blessing that's going to come in is not only is someone going to help you provide you emotional support, but they're going to give you the resources to untie you and to get you out of this stuck energy. And not only that, but instead of the seven of swords where you can't trust the people around you or a certain person, the six of cups is a very sweet, innocent energy. This is soul family energy. So instead of, you know, having these, this toxic person or these toxic connections, these toxic environments with people who, you know, are operating in this seven of swords energy, now you can trust you can trust the cup that's being handed to you is this nice flower and not a cup of poison. <laughs> so yeah, good people, good connections, helpful people, soul family connections. That's, that's what spirit is bringing in to help you. And you know, the specific, you know, circumstance situation is going to vary. Some of you, this could be talking about your love life. Like, why do I keep attracting the same jerk over and over again? And you feel like you have no control over that. So you're just trying to manifest the energy of true love. Then you're granted that with the six of cups, a soulmate connection, something that's healthy for you. That's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Um, so yeah, what that's specifically talking about could definitely vary, but just apply it how it resonates. Okay. So let's move on. We just did January, February, March. So now we're doing April, May, June, and July. April, May, June, July. <laughs> okay. P 
pile five april may no april may june why was i that's why it sounded wrong when i said july i was like no that's one month too many <laughs> you think by pile five i would have this down april may june y'all watching are like come on <laughs> April, May, June, pile five. April, May, June, pile five. Let's see. I should have just written it down. I was being stubborn. I am a Leo. April, May, June, pile five. April, May, June. Sorry, I keep trying to fix these cards and I didn't realize how many were flipped. I don't like that. I don't like starting off a deck when all the cards aren't flipped one way. April, May, June, pile five. Ooh, the Ace of Wands. I love the Ace of Wands. So, some new fresh energies coming in for you. We've got, oh my gosh, the star card again. I love this. I do have to cover her up though. Let's, let's do that, okay. Shut up, the Ten of Cups. And you did pick Sailor Venus, so <laughs> some of you, this is really talking about your love life. The Six of Pentacles. I don't know why, I'm feeling called to get one more card for you all. Just one more card. Bam, Queen of Wands, and I have to cover this up too. This is a little, hmm, this will do. We're just, we'll just have Pusheen cover her up, okay? All right. This is very, very positive. Um, and I'm so happy for you too, because going through the Seven of Swords is an awful energy. And that card has followed me around all year, all year long, all year long that card is. And I know what that card is talking about. And I'm getting, I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> so my heart goes out to you 110%. Like if you've had to deal with the Seven of Swords, it's heartbreaking. It's not fun. And it can really cause you to lose your faith in humanity. So I'm glad to see that it's, it's going away from your energy in 2023. So the Ace of Wands, the Star, Ten of Cups, Six of Pentacles, and the Queen of Wands here. You are getting some really big wish fulfillment here something really big and it's going to be a new start a new chapter and it's going to be very something that you're very passionate about something that emotionally with the ten of cups fulfills you something that also benefits your finances with the six of pentacles you now have two sixes because remember in your first quarter you also had the Six of Cups. So for some of you, love and money are intertwined. That's not gonna resonate for all of you, but it can, it can come about in different ways. This can be discussing a creative project that you really have put your heart into, blowing up and creating incredible financial success for you. And that would be totally in alignment with the Queen of Wands energy. And so something you love is making you a lot of money. It could, and that creates a new chapter for you, right? With the Ace of Wands, a new start. It opens up a lot of doors for you. It could also be talking about you meeting the love of your life and maybe they are very financially abundant. And so your relationship with them provides you this financial security that maybe you've never had before, or maybe they live in a really nice home and you end up moving in with them and that's an up-leveling in your financial status. So you see what I mean? Like this can resonate in different ways and feel free to claim both messages as well. But some, some, something you've been really wishing for, you've got the star card twice now. 
something you've really been wishing for is coming into fruition 110%, something big. And it definitely feels, it involves other people in some way with the repeating sixes. So whether that's a romantic partner is involved or your creative project involves fans, customers, an audience. You see what I mean? Like it's still a collaboration, whether it's with one other person or the people who are benefiting, you know, that energetic exchange between the creator and the consumer. Okay, let's move in to your next quarter. This is beautiful though. This is very exciting. Okay. Move this over. Okay. We're doing this one though. So July, August, September. <laughs> July, August, September, pile five. And with the energy of five, I could definitely see you having some major life changes and the ace of wands some major fast life changes in 2023 july august september july august september july august september july august september Eight of Swords, July, August, September, July, August, September, Two of Pentacles, July, August, September, July, August, September, Pile Five, Sailor Venus, The Empress, oh man, <laughs> oh man, Pile Five, Death. Bottom of the deck is five of wands. Some people really, really in 2022 tried to keep you out of your power. They viewed you as competition. They were intimidated by your potential and they wanted you to stay in this eight of swords. They didn't want you to key into your own strength here because this infinity symbol is reminding me of the strength card. They wanted you to feel like you were going to drop one of these balls, uh, well, pentacles. <laughs> like you were going to drop the ball, you were going to drop one of these pentacles. They didn't want you to see your own inner strength. They wanted to keep you trapped in this energy because the Eight of Swords, like we talk about these as being self-limiting beliefs, right? But where do those self-limiting beliefs come from? They don't just manifest in our mind, right? Most of the time, someone else put it there. Someone else planted that seed of doubt within us. Whether it was society, because society's always telling us, like, you're not good enough because they want you to buy stuff. That's capitalism. So, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Any teenage girl will tell you that. Um, so, I mean, look at this. Sometimes it's our family that does this to us. And those like generational wounds continue and continue until someone breaks that cycle and says, no, that's not right. Narcissistic parents, sibling rivalry. Someone wanted to keep you down. Someone wanted to keep you disempowered. And the empress, look at how confidently she, she walks here. And so I, I feel like you have this faith now, this unshakable faith that the universe is always going to have your back. The universe is on your side because you had this major wish fulfillment. You were trapped in a situation where you felt like you had no control, where you felt like you couldn't get out of it. And you, you were like, okay, it's time for a return to basics here. I feel trapped. I don't know what to do. So I'm just going to do my manifestation rituals. I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to wish upon a star and hope for the best. I'm going to dare to hope, dare to dream. 
And then you have like this Cinderella moment. And it's incredible. And you free yourself from this. And you did that that's the thing. Like people think that you just got lucky. But you're the one who was brave enough to hope, who was brave enough to dream in hopeless circumstances. In hopeless circumstances, you were brave enough to dare to dream. And Spirit rewarded you for that. And so you are just in your power and you know the Empress is the one who receives blessings. And she understands the power of creation. She is creation itself. She is fertility itself. And so this is you believing in your own creative capacity to make your own ground fertile, to end and start over again and again and again, to recreate your life again and again and again, as many times as you want. And so the past is dust. The past is bones. Like you're not going back to this old manner, this old way of thinking. And so with this death card energy here, like this, you've gone through this major transformation. And so you no longer believe the lies that you were told about yourself. You no longer argue for your limitations. You argue for your strengths. And so there is no competition. There is no competition between you and anyone else because you know that you're walking in your own power. And you know the reason why you're walking in your own power is because you're walking in your faith. And that's it. That's the name of the game. And if other people, if other people can't see their own potential, that's on them. And if they want to project their insecurities onto you, that's on them. But it's not stopping your abundance. It's not stopping your ability to create the life that you have always wanted. And so if you're asking what's happening in this third quarter, I said the blessings keep coming. The blessings keep coming and you are handling those changes with grace and you are confidently moving towards this complete and total transformation of self and you are moving away from this eight of swords you're in your power and things are going your way and you are deciding the direction that your life is headed in you are making that decision for yourself and that you are trusting that spirit will align to your vision. Because again, you're walking in your faith. Wow. <laughs> okay, so let's continue on. October, November, December. October, November, December. We've got the hanged man. The devil, the seven of wands, the four of wands. Okay. I love this. I love this a lot because the fact that the hanged man and the devil card are coming out together and both of them feature this clock. And, you know, throughout Alice in Wonderland, there's the, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. I've got a very important date, <laughs> right? And time seems to stop at the tea party, right? Like, it's completely nonsensical. I feel like you no longer view time as an enemy. Like, I feel like for many of you, you used to worry so much. Like, you, you felt, um, like, maybe comparing yourself a lot to other people. Like, I should be married by now. I should, have, I should have already had like my first child by now. I should be further along in my career. I should own my own house by now. I should have already traveled, you know, um, out of the country by now. I should, you know, there's like a lot of shoulds. I felt like that used to plague you a lot. You should, you should be here. You should be doing this. You should be further along in your path, further along in your journey. You should be further along in your goals. And... A lot of that, too, I feel like may have come from outside pressures. Outside pressures, especially from, from family, 
I'm picking up for some of you. Maybe from your friend group. And you just felt like it was all coming at you at once and you were always trying to, you were always having to fight off all this criticism, whether it was internally or externally. I, I don't, like not, nothing quite made sense. And so you were always trying to stay positive, stay positive, stay positive. And it feels like by the time you get to this October, November, December, this last quarter of 2023 for you, you finally feel at peace. Like all of these cards that were scattered before, like she can't even start to build her own house of cards because she's fighting off all these wands, right? And here, she has built a home from the wands and there her house of cards, it's perfect. And she's having this lovely tea party, right? Like she's enjoying herself. She has this stability. And so things feel very peaceful. They don't feel so chaotic. And they don't feel... It feels like you're just enjoying your peace and quiet. Like it feels like that was very hard earned. And you're feeling very content with where your life is by the end of 2023. You feel grounded. You feel stable. You feel peaceful. You're good with yourself. You're good with your life. And you've taken something that was negative and you've transformed it into something so completely positive and comforting. And you feel good enough and you feel strong. You feel so incredibly powerful that you transmuted this. There's an energy of like raising a glass to yourself. Like you're toasting yourself at the end of 2023. And the beauty in all of this is that you retained this beautiful feminine energy throughout all of it. You know, like you didn't make these difficult circumstances that you found yourself in or dealing with these difficult people these setbacks, it didn't harden your heart and you found strength in the softness. Like, you know, you wrapped up these wands in daisy chains. Like, it's beautiful. This really feels like a Cinderella story, quite frankly, because I think a lot of people would look at Cinderella. Cinderella's my favorite princess, so I'll give you that disclaimer right, right off the bat. Um... <laughs> People are always surprised by that because I read so much. Everyone thinks it would be Belle, but it's Cinderella. So Cinderella, you may look at her and think she just got lucky. But she was really a victim of abuse, right? Like she was essentially orphaned, forced to live in a home where she was abused repeatedly, I mean, her dead mother's dress was ripped off of her body, <laughs> you know, in the Disney movie. Like, it's horrible. Like, and it says, like, she was abused. And she had no agency to get out of that situation. Like, where was she going to go? Was she going to live on the streets? You know, like, she, she didn't have that agency. She didn't have that ability to financially leave. People act like that's so easy. Like, she should just leave. Like, where, where was she going to go? And... She also was taking care of all of those animals. Like, where, you know, like I, I could see her being like, I can't leave Bruno here. So, yeah. And all she wanted was just a night off. All she wanted was just to go to the ball and have a good time. And right at that moment where she surrendered and she was crying in the garden and she just didn't know what to do anymore. You know, she was trying her best, working hard every day, trying to keep her chin up. But how, I mean, to stay positive and to endure that kind of abuse day in and day out, that's tough. But she was doing it and she was still a good person. She wasn't bitter. She wasn't hateful. And at that moment of surrender, her fairy godmother comes to her and her wish is granted. And it's such a simple wish, such a simple wish. I just want a night out. She just wanted to go to the ball. She didn't even care about meeting the prince. She just wanted to have a night off, a, a night of fun. And then that simple wish led to her falling in love, having a true love connection with the prince. And she doesn't even realize he's the prince, right? Until the very end. 
And then she ends up getting married, her entire financial situation changes, and she has agency. And so all of that, I mean, is that not a case study in the law of attraction? Is that not a case study in having faith and good karma and how goodness is rewarded? how trust and faith is rewarded. Is that not a case study in the law of attraction? So I don't know. I just don't understand the hate on Cinderella. How do you hate on a victim of abuse is beyond me. Um, because there is resiliency in endurance and there is resiliency in being a survivor of abuse and trauma, which is exactly what she was. So with this four of wands, it may not have been that intense for you, you know, but I do feel like through your goodness and through your faith and that audacity that you have to dream, um, gosh, how does the song in Cinderella go? A dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. As long as you keep on dreaming as long as you keep on believing the dream that you're the wish that your heart makes no the dream oh man how does it go no matter how no matter how hard some of you know it <laughs> some of you are like come on bethany no matter how your heart is grieving as long as you keep on believing the wish that you dream will come true that would be like the mantra for you for the year 2023. Wow, I struggled to remember that. <laughs> also rainbows. Rainbows will be a significant sign that things are... Rainbows will be a sign that your spirit guides send you to reassure you in 2023. If you have a pet that you're close to or you have a certain animal or insect that you tend to see as a sign, like maybe you see ladybugs a lot or something like that, that is also reassurance from your guides. Also, some of you may have a pet that's a spirit guide who will be offering you support during this time. Okay, so pile five. <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't get your oracle card. I didn't get your oracle card. Just kidding. So we're going to get one of these cards here to close out your reading. So pile five. Theme of your 2023. Pile five. Overall theme of your 2023. Oh, yeah. Prosperity and abundance. This is going to be you. Sitting back. Enjoying your garden. Enjoying your home life. I feel like your home life, I feel like you're going to have a safe haven. You're going to have a safe haven away from the world. You're going to have a place where you can have that feeling of rest and restoration and rejuvenation. And you're going to feel very peaceful and very content with your social circle and the connections that you have around you. And I also feel this sense of like, I can sit back, lean back, close my eyes and trust that everything's going to be okay. If you've had a lot of anxiety about the future, I feel like as 2023 progresses, that's going to evaporate because you're going to see that wish come true pretty early on, you know, within the first six months. And it's just going to change your entire perspective completely. And so then you're going to sit back and say, well, I made this incredible wish come true. What else can I do? And it's again, this idea of like raising a glass to yourself and being so grateful to yourself that you kept your faith and that you dared to dream of a better life for yourself and congratulating yourself on keeping your faith because it's not an easy thing to do. And you did it. So pile five, this was your reading. Thank you so much for letting me do this for you. Um, your energy was very beautiful. And yeah, it, it was a treat for me to do this reading for you. Um, please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. 
hit the notification bell so you always know when I upload. The easiest way to support the channel is to watch the ads. You can also tip now with the um, super thanks. It's like a virtual tip jar. A huge thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel thus far. I wouldn't be here without you, so huge thank you to you all. And I hope you have the best December pile five. I I'm just so happy for you. I can't stop smiling. So yeah, congratulations. <laughs> I'll go ahead and say that already for you. Um, yeah. Take care, pile five. I'll see you in my next one. I mean, I was gonna film. What are you doing? <laughs> Gracie, can you get on your flower? Gracie, can you get on your flower? Look, Pooh. Gizzy. Get on your flower. You can help mommy film. Yeah, you can supervise. What? You, oh, okay. I see what the problem is. Her, this black and white cat, her, like, nemesis. <laughs> is obsessed with this rose bush in front of the house and they just mean mug each other like they just angry loaf stare at each other <laughs> and that's what's going on that's why she's like chirping like a bird yeah she's ticked <laughs> okay there's your cat cameo 